It's not like there's a law of physics that says that people have to trade in order to get what they need and what they want and to give what they need and want to others. We need organization, absolutely. But I don't think that this organization absolutely has to be based on trades. Even in today's world, there are millions of volunteers. There are volunteers that do so many different jobs, some very dirty jobs. I think there's no reason that we can't organize ourselves differently. Of course, if you say that trade creates most problems, then maybe what we should do is make trade-free things to try to make trade less relevant. So trade-free is like free, but completely free. If I give you something that's trade-free, I don't expect anything from you. I don't expect money, I don't expect a hug, I don't expect your data, I don't expect your attention, I don't expect for you to do a little dance. So trade-free means I expect nothing. So something is trade-free. If I, for example, have access to a social network, but I don't need to trade anything in return for that. I don't need to trade my data, I don't need to trade my attention or currency or anything else. Then this network is trade-free for me. Trade-free is like sugar-free, meaning it doesn't contain that for you as the user. If you eat that thing and that thing is sugar-free, it means it doesn't contain sugar there, so you as a user, you will not get to eat sugar. Same is, is with uh, trade-free goods and services. If for you as the user, it's trade-free, you don't have to give anything to them. Uh, doesn't matter how it was created. The Virginia native has made nearly 3 million edits on Wikipedia, written 35,000 original articles. This is truly a mind-boggling feat. How much money do you make from this? None. Why do you do it? The idea of it, making it all free, fascinates me. People like Stephen are incredibly important to platforms like Wikipedia, simply because they are the ones who are the lifeblood. 6,000 people visit the site every second, bringing a responsibility for the editors to present a diverse and fair platform. How is Wikipedia, for example, the largest encyclopedia in the world, trade-free? Well, for me as a user, it is trade-free. I can access Wikipedia, you know, I don't have to give them anything. They don't want my data, they don't want my money. I don't, I don't have to give them my currency in order to access Wikipedia. I don't have to give them my, my, my freedom or my data or whatever. I don't have to give them anything really. And so I don't care if they pay for the servers or they pay for the employees so they engage into trades in other, in other areas there. I care how it is between me and the good and the service because we have to start somehow. We can't just say, okay, let's create a, a trade-free encyclopedia, but everything about it should be trade-free, like the servers that they use. You can do it like that. It's almost like thinking that you want to create open source software, but you can start it because you don't have an open source operating system. And you know, was this open source software created on an open source machine? Like, it's crazy, it's probably not, but it doesn't matter. It's still open source software for me as the end user. So that's how I see trade-free goods and services for me as the end user, should be trade-free. My project is to make all software free. I get up around five or so and come into the lab, read the messages people would send me, then I'd go out to Chinatown with people and have a nice dinner. Then I'd come back and I would write programs all night and around seven in the morning I'd go to sleep. Richard Stallman has been called the last pure hacker for choosing to remain at MIT despite the temptations of the commercial world, true to the spirit of the early hackers. What they had in common was mainly love of excellence in programming. They wanted to make their programs that they used be as good as they could. They also wanted to make them do neat things. They wanted to be able to do something in a more exciting way than anyone believed possible and show, look how wonderful this is. I bet you didn't believe this could be done. Another example is also the Linux community and so many developers who like program or develop in their spare time amazing trade-free projects and programs and like operating systems. They just like do it because they like doing it without expecting anything in return. The only reason that I made it available on the internet was really it made so much sense. Uh, people said, why did you do that? especially in the US, but also in Finland, that people just 
did not understand the concept of creating a program because you like programming. I'd done this project for myself. I didn't want to commercialize it because I didn't want to go through the headaches and uh, I had no incentives to. Land of Turbos is a lot like Bouquet. Both are about the same height, <laughs> which I, I love. I, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. There are more and more projects um, coming up and people working on like other alternative social networks and it's called the Fediverse. So there you have Friendica, Mastodon, but also Hubzilla or um, like pixel fat so there are more and more alternatives coming up for like the big companies for YouTube and um, Facebook and Instagram the beauty of these alternative networks um, of the Fediverse is that it's federated that means that I myself can host an instance, I can like put Friendica on my server and provide it to other people and then this is one node and then other people can host their own instance and they can then communicate with each other. So there is no centralized power but the power is like distributed, it's federated and that's the beauty of it.